In this video, we'll learn to add the three digit numbers. So I've represented here 111. And underneath that, I've got 133. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add these two amounts together. And let's see what demand I get. So I'll start with the units because I might have more than 10 and then I'll need to carry them over. So I've got one, two, three, four. So one and three makes four. And I'll look at the tens now. So I've got one, two, three, four of them. And I've got one, two of these. So the number that I get when I add 111 and 133 is 244. So I'll illustrate with another example what I just did, this time using the digits. So let's say I've got 453 and I'm going to add to it 216. So I've got 3 and 6 makes 9. 5 and 1 makes 6. 4 and 2 makes 6. So that is 669. But I want to also look at what happens when we have more than 9 in these columns. So I will add a few more so I've got now we've got a hundred and seventeen so there are seven and I've got three there so what's that gonna do to the number seven and three makes 10 and as we've said before we can't write 10 here it's just the units that I'd write here and they go up to 9 so if I have a 10 that would be transferred over here so I'll write the 0 and I'll add that 10 to this side so that means I'm actually putting all of these together to make a block of 10 So that means I've got now one, two, three, four, five. So I've got five tens because I carried over one lot of ten. And the hundreds haven't changed, so I've got two hundreds. So that number is now 250. That's what these two added up to. So I'll look now at another example. Let's say we've got. 584 and I'm going to add 328 to this. Let's see what we get. So again, we start with the units. We've got 4 and 8. That makes 12. So I'll write the 2 down out of the 12. So 2 that represents the units. And a lot of 10 will be carried over. So I've got an extra lot of 10 in there. So 8 and 1 makes 9. And another 2 makes 11. So again, just like with the 12, I write the unit down. And I'll carry over the 10. Because that makes a lot of these, which is the hundreds now. So we've got 5 and 1 makes 6. And the 3 makes 9. So that makes 912. We'll now look at another example. So um, if we have 457, we'll add to it 294. So 7 and 4 makes 11. So I'll write the units down transfer the tens over to the tens so we've got 
Right, 1 and 9 makes 10 and the 5 makes 15. So we've got the 5 of the units down, we transfer those tens over. So 1 and 4 makes 5 and the 2 makes 7, so that makes 751. The method that I've just used to go through these is called the column method. So now that we've looked at the column method, we'll look at a couple of other methods. The next one will be the partitioning method. So we'll break the numbers down into parts. Let's say we've got 213 and we'll add to it 445. 213, we'll break it down into 200, 10 and 3. 445 will be 400, 40 and 5. Let's collect the hundreds together. So we've got 200 and 400 makes 600. 10 and 40 makes 50. 3 and 5 makes 8. And another example. Let's say we've got... Um, this one here, 453, and we'll add 216. So that's broken down into 453, then we have 210 and 6. 400 and 200 makes 600. 50 and 10 makes 60. 3 and 6 makes 9. So our answer is 669, just like this was 658. So that illustrates how to use the partition method. We'll now look at the number line method. So, this is how that looks like. Number line method. So, let's have 584 as the starting point. What we're going to do is, we're going to add to this 328, which is broken down into 300, 20 and 8. So I'll add these in turn. 584. If I add 300 to it, it will become 684, 784, 884. So 884. So I've done the 300. Then I'm going to add 20 to it. So 884, 894, and if I add another 10, that will become 904. Now all that remains is adding 8, so I'll add 8 to that. If I add 8 to 4, that becomes 12, and that was 904, so this is 912 as the answer.